Thank you, Lord, Holy, for giving us this time. We give you all praise and we give you all glory. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for helping us understand your word. And we pray that this word will bear fruit in us a hundredfold. Thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Though we, we can't be together, we know where two or three are gathered in your name. You are there in our midst, Lord. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for fulfilling your purposes in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to study about, or continue our studies on the types of Christ in the Old Testament. Christ means what God meant He was going to do for His standard and which is going to be fulfilled by the Christ or the Messiah. So for us to know how we don't meet up to his standards, God laid down his standards. And so that we know that only one person is qualified to fulfill that standard. That one person had to be sinless. That one person is Christ the Messiah, or Jesus, as we know him. I taught you about the Passover, the burnt offerings, the Passover first, remember, uh, from Exodus, then the burnt offerings from Leviticus, the meal offerings, the peace offerings, the sin offering. Yes? Now, I could continue on that, on the study of Book of Leviticus, but then it would become a study of the Book of Leviticus, whereas this is meant to be the study of the plan of God, what God has purposed. So if you want to know what God really meant, read the book of Leviticus. If you have any questions, ask me. Yeah, And then we also went to study about the trespass offering. And um, we t I taught you about the day of atonement, the blood of atonement. Do you understand? And a little bit about how the priesthood is, the high priestess. I taught you about the uh, scapegoat and the holiness codes and what is required to approach a holy God in the Old Testament. Do you understand? Where our sins are atoned, and atoned for, for, temporarily atoned for, how it was fixed for once and for all by Jesus Christ. Do you understand? That is a holy God and how we can approach a holy God with our unholiness. We have to... There has to be a substitution made. And that substitution was made. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He made him, God made Christ to be sin for us. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says that. Do you understand? Yeah? So, this week we're going to study about the Kingsman Redeemer. What it really means. And the feast ordained by God that are celebrated by Israel. So, let's start with Leviticus 16, 12 to 13. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, with his hands full of sweet incense, beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, lest he die. Yes. So the priest who went into the, into the Holy of Holies was always afraid or should have been very careful lest he die. Do you understand? It was not a casual affair. It was a serious affair. To go to into the presence of a holy God. Do you want to say, you should not have anything unholy. Do you understand? Like, for example, you heard about the um, Columbia disaster, the space shuttle that blew up in space, yeah? Why? Because one of his heat shields had, um, had been destroyed. And because there was 
an abundance of heat at re-entry, the heat managed to get inside where it should not and destroy the vessel, the shuttle. Do you understand? Had there been a heat shield, that would not have happened. Do you understand? Same thing with sin. If there is sin in our life, it is guaranteed to destroy us in the Holy of Holies before a holy God. Do you understand? Yeah? Here it's the opposite. Yeah? When you have sin, it acts like there is no heat shield. Do you understand? But our shield is Christ. He's our heat shield. Yeah? So make sure you know nothing wears off that heat shield. Yes? Lest we die. Do you understand? So by faith in Christ, we have a heat shield for re-entry into the atmosphere or and into the presence of God. Yes? It's a crude example, but you understand what I'm saying, yes? Go to Hebrews 19, or Hebrews 10, 19 to 20. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. Yes. So, therefore, brethren, this is the author of the Hebrews writing to the church, yes? Brethren, you, that means you and me, yes? We have boldness to enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus. He's our heat shield, basically. Do you understand? So, that... That blood speaks for us. Do you understand? Our sin caused him to die. The death has already taken place. But death could not hold him because he was sinless. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, There's logic in this. Yes. So by the blood of Jesus and the blood contains life. I taught you on all of this. Yes. So that then is a new and living way which he consecrated for us. That means which he made for us, yeah? Through the way that is his flesh. If you meditate on this, you'll understand that. What was torn? The whale was torn. By his stripes we are healed. Do you understand? Yes? So anyway. We're talking about having boldness to enter the Holy of Holies, yes? So we have, the, we have boldness in the new covenant to enter by the blood of Jesus, yes? To meet with God. Why? We need a fellowship with God. And to have that fellowship, you must have a relationship with God. Do you understand? I used to explain it this way. When Samuel was born, in the nursery, there were a lot of babies that, was, that were born around that time. Unless there was a signboard saying, Samuel, son of John, I would not know him from another person. Because all of them, as far as I'm concerned, are babies. Do, do you understand? I doubt if Anu would know also. If they had put another baby. Do you, do you understand? That was then. But now, uh, when he was in class, there were 30 students. And all of them made a noise. I know which was made by Samuel. Why? Because I have a relationship with him. He's lived with, it, with me. Do you, do you understand? That is a relationship. We must have with God. My sheep know my voice, says Jesus, yes? Do you know his voice? Or do you listen to anything and everything? Or do you even go by your flesh? Do you understand? We are supposed to go by Jesus' flesh, which was torn for us. Do you understand? That starts with a relationship with God. Like I said last week, if somebody walks in here that that I that is a complete stranger, either I will take a gun or I'll take the broom. I'll drive them out. 
they don't have a relationship with me, then what's the point? Do you understand? They cannot fellowship with me. But if it's a person I have a relationship with, then I'll have fellowship with them. Same thing with God. Do you understand? And to, to understand what brings that relationship, we must know what Jesus does as our kinsman redeemer. Do you understand? Like for example, when I went to a funeral in Koilon, an elderly person asked me, do you know who I am? In all honesty, I said, no, I don't know who you are. And I went thinking the matter is over. Later, this, this person approached me and said, you don't know who I am. I said, no, I don't know who you are. Oh, that is because of your mother's fault. And she started there and for the next half an hour, she made me regret what I said. Do you understand? Because she said, just that, then my upbringing, all this. Now. And the person who sat across me to have lunch was listening to all this. I said, she's talking to you, not to me. <laughs> but basically, this person actually was my mom's cousin or second cousin or third cousin or something. Where I come from in that village, everybody's cousins, yeah? knows each other. But I don't know who she was, yeah? Do you understand? She felt I should know her. Why? Because we are related. But same way with God. God should feel that you know him and he knows you because you are related. How is that possible? When God has already abandoned us at the Tower of Babel, then how then can Jesus redeem us? Or buy us back. Do you, do you understand? So that's where the kinsman redeemer comes into play. And that's where we study the book of Ruth Hall. Do you understand? I have taught extensively on the book of Ruth. Do you understand? There are four chapters, it's not much, but you can go through all the studies. But now, so that we understand that briefly, let's go to Leviticus 25. 25. If one of your brethren becomes poor and has sold some of his possession and if his, and if his redeeming relative comes to redeem it, then he may redeem what his brother sold. Yes, that redeeming relative now then is our kinsman or becomes a kinsman or goel. He has the right of redemption to buy things back, yes? Your brother becomes more. Remember, each tribe is allocated a land. So you have to be part of that tribe. So that person should have the right of redemption, the kinsman. So kinsman could be could free the debtor by paying the ransom price. Yes, the kinsman must be nearest of kin. This is very important. Yes? In other words, there should not be another person who's willing, who's nearer to that person. If a cousin wants to redeem, then he can. But if there's a second cousin, the person closest to you has a first right. Yes? So the kinsman must be the nearest of kin. He must be able to redeem. That means he must have the money, for example. He must be willing. He, that willingness is important. Suppose you have a distant relative and a close relative. And if the close relative is not willing, then the distant relative can. Do you understand? And must be free of calamity or the need of redemption himself. In other words, you should not be in worse trouble. Yes? Do you understand? So the the redemption was complete when the price was paid in full. That means there is no discount on another thing. You pay so that the other person cannot talk anymore. You you buy back. Do, do, do you understand? Yes? And this is the right to buy back. 
and it belonged only to the nearest kinsman. Do you understand? And this is who Jesus is to us. We're going to study about that. So for that, let's go to Ruth 2.1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a man of great wealth, of family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Yes. So there was a relative or a kinsman of Naomi, yes? A man of great wealth. That means he's able. Yes, he's a kinsman. A family of Elimelech, that was Naomi's husband, yes? And his name was Boaz. Now, Naomi and her husband left Israel with two children, Mahalon and Chilion. Yeah, I explain all that on Sunday, yes? Now, Mahalon and Chilion had wives that were taken uh, to be their wives outside of the clan of Israel. Their wives were called Oprah and Ruth, yes? So, before Ruth married her husband, her husband what, what, was what? Ruthless. Elimelech died, the children died. And so Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, why don't you go back? And Oprah made a big fuss about it, but she went back when Ruth clung on to Naomi. And Naomi and Ruth returned back. And this is what we read afterwards, after they returned back. Do you understand? Yes? So, there was a relative of Naomi's husband. That means he was close, yes? To Elimelech, as, a, as far as a kinsman goes, yes? To, so, read Ruth 3, 12 and 13. Now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. Stay this night, and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you, good, let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. Lie down until morning. Yes. So... What's happening is once they get back to that place, they have to live, no? So Ruth was sent to glean of the land and she was instructed by Naomi to go. And she happened to be in the field of Boaz. Boaz is their relative. And so in time, as instructed by Naomi, Ruth went and said, you are my kinsman redeemer, so redeem me. So to, you, you need to do that. And then what, what did, what did uh, um, Boaz say? It is true that I am a close relative, that I am a kinsman redeemer. However, there is a relative closer than I. That means there was someone who was in that line. So then what Boaz did was he arranged a meeting with that person and said, look, you need to redeem that land back. He said, okay, but with the land, you need to take back what was part of the land, which is Ruth. He said, no, I won't do that because it will interfere with my family. Do you understand? So then he is not willing. Then that puts Boaz in succession. Do you understand? So Boaz then redeemed Ruth by marrying her. And therefore bought the land back. Do you understand? Read Ruth 4.4. 4. And I thought to inform you, saying, Buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants and the elders of my people, if you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is no one but you to redeem it. And I am next after you. And he said, I will redeem it. So if you read that on, this is Boaz talking to that relative. He said, okay, I'll take the land. Because it's good to have more land, yeah? Do you understand? So he was willing. He was able, I mean, he was able, but he was willing to get the land, but not Ruth with the land. Do you understand? Read uh, Ruth 
4:14 Then the women said to Naomi Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative and may his name be famous in Israel So we know the story I'm truncating it do you understand but we understand from the story about Christ about Jesus being our nearest kin our redeemer how does he do that well go to romans 8:15 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father yes by adoption god has adopted us into his family yes so then christ becomes our brother and our redeemer does that make sense yes with that uh, that adoption we are strangers do you understand but he has been adopted I mean, we have been adopted and we receive the spirit of adoption that means the holy spirit is involved in that do you understand christ paved the way but the holy spirit made the way to to understand yes could read ephesians 1:5 having predestined us to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will yes predestined us to what adoption to to understand yes adoption as sons do you understand to god himself by jesus christ yes do you understand god will this god made this happen is that, is that clear yes so he had chosen us he, so jesus met all the conditions of a kinsman christ lifts up and carries us in yes and never to return these sins back to us again do you don't understand he's take, taken that that just like this goat suffered what the sinner would suffer without christ do you understand so that's a scapegoat yes now now you understand yeah how jesus is a kinsman redeemer yes Now we're going to study about the feast of Israel. Go to Leviticus 23 verse 5. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight it is the Lord's Passover. Yes. So that is the Passover festival. I've explained that in detail in my previous study. Yes. It's a memorial feast that speaks of the redemption by blood is based upon the exodus out of egypt christ is our passover do you understand and is slain for us yes in 1 corinthians 5:7 can you go there 1 corinthians 5:7 therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened for indeed christ our passover was sacrificed for us yes so christ is our passover yes so that is the first festival yes then you have the festival of the unleavened bread that speaks about the communion we have with christ and a holy walk christ cleanses the old and regenerate life of believer if you are clean like a pig you will not go back into the mud if you are filled with the holy spirit the mud will be digestible to you do you understand i'm just using this as an example when i was healed of an addiction to music i didn't need music for what what i needed 
for, for like heavy music or light music, whatever. Do you understand? I was set free from that. Same thing with alcohol. I didn't need alcohol. Do you understand? I was dead to it. It meant nothing to me. Does that make sense? Yes? So that is, so that is what the Holy Spirit does to us, changes us. Do, do you understand? Otherwise, you're always fighting this temptation, no matter what. I'm not saying I don't have a chance to go back into that. Do you understand? But the Holy Spirit will raise up a standard. Do, do you understand? Will will raise up a barrier towards that. Is is that clear? Yes. So that will make me sealed with Him and holy. Therefore. Yes, go to Leviticus 23, 6 to 8. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. But you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord for seven days. The seventh day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. So this is the feast of the unleavened bread, yes? Go to John 6.35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Yes, I am the bread of life, yes? Read Mark 8.15. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. So the leaven speaks of sin. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They are two different things, yeah? But the bread was unleavened because it, they didn't have time to make it rice, yes? Do you understand? But this leaven symbolizes Sin, leaving of the Pharisees and the leaving of Herod. They're two different things. Yeah, so, but we're not going to get into that. Yeah, but you can meditate on that. Yeah, what did the Pharisees want? What did Herod want? Do you understand? You can go into depth with that. But the third festival is the festival of the barley harvest or the first fruits. Yeah. It's typical of the resurrection. Go to Leviticus 23, 9 to 14. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheep, a male lamb of the first year, without blemish, as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to the Lord for a sweet aroma. And its drink offering shall be of wine, one fourth of a hen. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain, nor fresh grain, until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Yes. So, God claims the first fruit of everything. The sheaf re represented all of the harvest. God has first claim on life. Jesus is now in the presence of the Father as the representative of the whole church still in the field, yes? He will remain un there until the second coming and then the whole harvest will be gathered. Yeah, there are scriptures of, for all of this, but I'm not going to go into this. Go to Matthew 24, 31 or Mark 13, 27. The believer is thus consecrated to God in Christ. We have the first fruits 
of the Spirit. Do you understand? And we are the first fruit of his creation. Yes? Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and 23. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Yes, Christ the first fruits, yeah? Read Romans 8.23. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. We also who have the first fruit of the Spirit. First fruit of the what? Spirit. Is the S capitalized? That means first fruit of the Holy Spirit, yes? So in order to bear fruit, you must have what? The Holy Spirit. That is why it is known as the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, yes? Do you, do you understand? Yes? Otherwise, you will have fruit of the flesh. It's not spooky. You need to understand there is logic in, the, in God's thinking. Go to James 1.18. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his, cre of his creatures. Yes. Do you, do you understand that? Yeah. Talking about this first fruits, we are the first fruits, but there were other people whom generally are not categorized as that. Go to Matthew 27, 52 to 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Yes. In other words, when Jesus died, yes, all this happened. But it says very clearly here on verse 53, And coming out of the graves after his what? Resurrection. resurrection. So when was, his, when was he resurrected? On the third day, yes? Not when he died. So could it have been that the graves were opened when he died and they came out of the graves after his resurrection? I do not know. Do you understand? I can assume many things. But what I know is that the dead were raised. They went into the holy city. Yes? Do, do you understand? We need to meditate on that to understand this. But we're talking about the first fruits. Do you understand? There, what I'm trying to say is don't put God in a box. Don't think you have it all, you understand it all. You're always learning. That's why you are a disciple of Christ. Do you, do you understand? Yes? It is a mistake to think that you know it all. Okay. Now, after the first fruits, we have the Feast of the Pentecost. The Pentecost is the ingathering of the first fruit of the wheat harvest. It was considered to be the birth of the church. Do you understand? Yes? What happened after 50 days after Jesus was raised? Where he died? There was a feast of Pentecost. You read in the book of Acts. Yeah? So go to Leviticus 15, uh, 23, Leviticus 23, 15 to 22. And you shall count for yourself from the day after Sabbath, uh, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven sab Sabbaths uh, shall be completed. Count fifty days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring from your habitations two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits to the Lord. And you shall offer with the bread seven lambs of the first year without blemish, one young bull and two rams. They shall be as a burnt offering to the Lord with their grain offering and their drink offerings an offering made by fire for a sweet aroma to the Lord. 
then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goats as a sin offering and two male lambs of the first year as a sacrifice of peace offering the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before the lord with the two lambs they shall be holy to the lord for the priest and you shall proclaim on the same day that it is a holy convocation to you you shall do no customary work on it it shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation when you reap the harvest of your land you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap nor you shall gather any gleaning from your harvest you shall leave them from for the poor and for the stranger i am the lord your god yes so this happens on verse 16 according to verse 16 count 50 days after the seventh sabbath yes so this is known as the day of pentecost so the feast of pentecost yes go to acts 2 act 1 to 4 when the day of pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance yes on the day of pentecost the holy spirit came down and we have a denomination called the pentecostal to understand because of all this yes but we understand the feast of pentecost now do you understand now following that is the feast of the trumpets do you understand oh basically the shofar basic a shofar is made out of a ram's horn can you read leviticus 23 23:25 Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying Speak to the children of Israel saying in the 7th month on the first day of the month you shall have a sabbath rest a memorial of blowing of trumpets a holy convocation you shall do no do no customary work on it and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord Yes now I have taught you about the trumpets before to understand on last week or maybe two weeks before that while the, um, taking jericho there were, there were trumpets involved and do you understand yeah and even before that when i spoke about the end of days the last days yeah? so go to matthew 24 29 to 31 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give it give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other yes so with the great sound of a trumpet yes after the seals are opened in revelation of jesus christ what happens then there are seven trumpets read your bible once in a while yeah It'll do you good yes after the seven trumpets there are the bowls do you understand yeah any yeah. so after the trumpets you have the feast of the tabernacles tabernacle means booth this is something that even christians don't understand fully they need to understand this fully yeah it, this is com- celebrated to remind people of the time when the children of israel lived in tents during their wilderness journey it is celebrated in the fall do you understand and for an entire week where people live in boots or tents i have jewish friends who at that time they go outside in the backyard and they live in tents yes 
Do you understand? Read Leviticus 23, 33 to 44. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. That's enough. We can read that later. But basically, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of the tabernacles. Yes? Do you understand? Read John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is the word? Jesus, yes. Jesus, who was God, became flesh, who was man, yes. And what? Dwelt among us, tabernacled with us. I seeing the connection, yes. For only a temporary time. Until he went on the cross and died and rose again. Do you understand? But he dwelt among us. While he was with us, we beheld his glory. Yes? Glorious of one, of the only begotten of the Father. Yes? Do you understand? Yeah? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes? So, that is the feast of the tabernacles. Now, that you have the after that, the, the sabbatical year. This was a year-long Sabbath. The purpose and character of the Sabbath was magnified. It's called a Shemitah year. It's on the fifth year, yes? And uh, this year is a Shemitah year. Oh, this year is going to be a Shemitah year, according to the Jewish calendar. Go to Leviticus 25. 1 to 7. And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your wine, uh, prune your vineyard, and gather it in its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended wine, for it is a year of rest for the land. And the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you, for you and your servant." for your maid servant and your hired servant, for the stranger who sojourns with you, for your livestock and the animals that are in your land, all its pro produce shall be for food. So it was a time of rest for the land for a full year, yes? Go to Hebrews 4, 9-10. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Yes. So, this speaks about the time of rest, who Jesus is to us. Do you, do you understand? We operate from that rest. In other words, we stop striving. Do you understand? We operate from that rest, yes? I'm not going to go into that because if you don't understand that, then you need to read the book of Romans and the book of Hebrews. You need to understand what that means actually. Do you understand? Also, you need to read the Gospels. Basically, you need to know the whole Bible, yes? <laughs> do, do you understand? But we stop striving. We stop on the seventh day, God did what? He rested from the creation. Do, do you understand? Yes? 
then we're going to the Jubilee year. The Jubilee year was celebrated every 50 years and was inaugurated on the Day of Atonement with the blowing of the trumpets. All the Hebrew slaves were set free, obligation of debts were terminated, and the land was restored to the original owner. We understand this Jubilee year as a millennial reign of Christ or starting from the millennial reign of Christ and beyond. Let's go to Leviticus 25, 8-24. to And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years. And the time of seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you for shall be to you 49 years then you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the 7th month on the day of atonement you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land and you shall consecrate the 50th, 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants it shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your unattended wine. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat it produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. And if you sell anything to your neighbor, or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress you shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor, and according to the number of years of crops, he shall sell to you. According to the multitude of years, you shall increase its price, and according to the fewer number of years, you shall diminish its price. For he sells to you according to the number of the years of the crops. Therefore you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. So you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land in safety. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and dwell there in safety. And if you say, What shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce? Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat old produce until the ninth year, until its produce comes in. You shall eat of the old harvest." The land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession, you shall grant redemption of the land. Yes. The time, as the Bible says, it's the beginning of something, yes? It's the beginning of freedom, yes? Now, in Luke 4.19, can you read that? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, this is what Jesus was reading. This is taken from Isaiah 61, where it continues on to say, to the year of vengeance of our God. You can read all that later, yes. But this acceptable year of the Lord is known as the Jubilee. It's a year of redemption. It's a year of freedom. It's a year of forgiveness. Do you understand? So God so loved the world that he gave his only son, yes? Only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not or should have. Should have eternal life. God did not send that son to condemn the world. But that through him must be saved, yes? So, did Jesus come to condemn you or to set you free? Yes. But what is the condemnation? 
says right there in those verses. Read 17, 18, 19, and 20 in John chapter 3. Later you can read that. This is the condemnation that though he came, you do not believe him. Do you understand? Though he came as the light, he walked in darkness. He just gave him lip service. Do you understand? And therefore, you will be condemned with those who rejected him. If, do you understand? If, if that is, Christ did not come to condemn you. The Old Testament condemned you. Because it had to make us know the standard of God. But Christ came to convict us. And because we are convicted, for example, of our sin, he confessed those sins. And we overcome that. And he's able to forgive those sins. He doesn't condemn us for that. Because while we were sinners, he died for us. But if we continue to walk with this darkness, how can we have fellowship with the light? Do you understand? Our hearts always go towards what is not of God's. Guaranteed. But we have to overcome through the Spirit. And that is why the Holy Spirit is important. Is it clear? Yes. So we are sealed for the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. Yes, with the Holy Spirit, yes? Do you understand? Now, the, these are the temple, these are the festivals that the Jews celebrate. They mean something to us as Christians because Christ fulfilled each one of them or is fulfilling each one of them. Am I clear on that? Yes? Now study this in depth by yourself. And if you have any questions, ask me. What I know, I can tell you. Yes? So, is this much clear? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your faithfulness unto us.